Good morning and welcome back to Tabletop Tuesday on Gaming with ADHD. Today I wanted to take a look at Stella from Libelud Games. They're the makers of Dixit and this is the first in what they are calling the Dixit Universe. It is different from original Dixit but it does still use the original cards. And in this game you and other players are going to be trying to identify cards according to a chosen theme for that round. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this a little different than I've done reviews in the past. Um, we're going to, you know, kind of look at the game uh, as it as as you would set it up and how you play it. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about my thoughts. But before we do that, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. I do try to put a few different videos out every week uh, covering all sorts of topics in tabletop gaming from miniatures to role playing to board and card games uh, and pretty much anything else uh, related to tabletop games. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss anything and let's get on with the review. So, this is Stella. It is for three to six players. And depending on how many players you're playing with, it'll take you about 30 minutes to an hour. So, right here we have our score sheet. Everybody is assigned a color. And you will track your score through four different rounds. Uh, one thing that I do like about this this is laminated and they give you dry erase markers so that you know easily reusable as opposed to if they were giving you uh, paper components that you would throw away later okay these are the player boards uh, the way that we use them is that once the board is set up everybody will hold their board uh, during play and uh, and scoring so that their board matches the orientation of the table. And I'll show you how that sets up here in just a minute. So some people will hold it like this, some like this, you know, obviously depending on how you're sitting at the table. Uh, and let's just set that to the side for a minute. Each player is also given one of these tokens. Uh, that is their lantern token and is used to mark how many choices they've made. Uh, this is the scout token. So this indicates the first player in a given round. Um, we usually don't call players scouts. It just sounds... It, games try to come up with these unique ways of describing players or the game master, whatever it is, sometimes they get in a way. I'll just throw that in right now, is that something that we really didn't care for? So take a couple of these out. This is the two-part edge of the board. Uh, this is, so first off, as you can see, the edge of this, um, this organizer right here, does match the edge of the player board. So that is why I mentioned that depending on how you're sitting at the table, some people will sit you know, over here on the side, some down below, some above. So you just want to mat, uh, match your player board so that it you know, gives you the same orientation. Okay. Now, as you're going through the game, you're going to be selecting cards. And once everybody has selected cards, they'll use their lantern tokens to mark how many different cards that they've chosen. If a player is, you know, the only one uh, at the top of the board, so they pick the most cards of anyone, then they would flip it over and they are called in the dark. Um, it, basically, if they don't get everything right, they're going to lose one point. Uh, per card uh, otherwise if two players are on the same board they're still you know or they're not in the dark and so their score won't be affected so that's how that 
works. All right, I'm just going to use half of this because of my infamously small, uh, my infamously small, you know, review table. And we're going to take a couple of these cards and some of our Dixit cards. And let's set these off to the side. All right, so actually I can stretch this out a little bit more. All right. So I'm just going to set up a couple of rows because obviously I don't have a lot of room. So you're going to set up five cards in three different rows. Now, the game does have four different rounds. And after each round, you're going to replace one of the rows of cards. So you'll end up where... Uh, each row gets used three times during the entire game. And uh, it's it's an interesting twist. It's, you know, I'm, I'm, I kind of wonder if we should mix it up a little bit more. But it is nice so that that way some cards should get picked as the game goes on. All right. You're then given one of these, or, well, you're also given a deck of these category cards. So they are double-sided, and the way that we play it is, you know, uh, whoever wins the last round, or whatever reason you choose, somebody will pick the category, so they'll draw a card, and then they will pick one of the two uh, options. So it, we've got Funny and Stranger, and we've got Ogre, and Eternal. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Stranger for this example. So obviously we don't have the full board of 15 cards as you can see on my player board. Let's slide these over a little bit. But this is good enough for our example. So holding it in orientation with the board. So I'm going to be using these six squares in the upper left. So stranger, you know, say I like this card. So I'll mark that box. I like this card. So I might mark that box. And just because, you know, you never know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick that card as well. So those are my choices. I'm then going to take my player board and I'm going to put it uh, upside down. I do need to keep that information secret from any other player. All right. So once that's done, in this case, uh, I picked, uh, we're going to pretend that I picked, you know, six different cards and somebody else picked six cards. So we're both, uh, we're, neither of us are in the dark. So, when the scoring starts, each player, or the first player is going to pick from the cards that they have chosen. So, I'm going to say I picked, you know, I picked this one. Now, as long as at least one other person picked my card, I'm safe. Okay? If one person picked my card, then we're both going to score three points. And we indicate this by coloring in the stars on the board. Okay, so that one's worth three points. If two people or more picked that same card, then in that case, I'd only get two points. So I wouldn't get this third point uh, at the top that's in the circle. Okay, so in most cases, cards are going to be worth at least two points. Okay. Now, that will continue around the board. So if somebody picks this one and I didn't, then uh, then they'll just keep going. I don't score points for that. And so then it comes back around to me and I say that I picked this card. Nobody else in the game picked that one. It was a Hail Mary. I figured, let's try it. And... So I picked that card, but nobody else did. 
in that case, I am out for the rest of the game. I have lost my spark, and at that point, I am ineligible to score additional points. Now, that doesn't mean you're not participating. Okay, so this is a, this is a little different because while it is a type of player elimination, each player is required to keep going because those that didn't get eliminated by picking a card that nobody else did, maybe one of those people that got eliminated might have picked one of those cards. So say that you know it came to me and I I was or or it came to the next player and they picked this card and so did I, well, then they're still safe because somebody else picked the card. Okay. So with that said, in this case, I would score two points. I would mark that down and we would go through each round and score points accordingly. And at the end of the game, total up the score. Whoever has the highest score wins the game. So that is a quick rundown of how to play Stella. Uh, to be honest with you, this was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, there are similar games such as uh, Codenames or... Uh, what's another good example? Uh, Codenames is the best one that I have to compare this to. Um, I did, wasn't really a fan of Codenames. I, I, I didn't really grasp, uh, the concept. It, it, it just, I just didn't have a lot of fun with it. But this one, because it does build off of Dixit, the idea where you want somebody to pick your card, but you don't want everybody to pick your card still actually kind of comes up in this game. You want to make sure at least somebody picks the same card as you. So you can get uh, you can get a little aggressive. You're allowed to pick up to 10 cards out of 15 in a turn, but then you run that risk. Are you going to be in the dark? And you know, are there enough players that would have picked cards so that you're going to be safe all 10, you know, turns around, uh, you know, trying to pick out uh, the different cards. So I think there's a lot of interesting little strategy. Um, I personally, I think it plays better when you have, you know, five or six players, um, but it also gets a lot more challenging when you're playing in a game of three, which is the minimum. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be, be very fun, but a three-player game ended up going very, very quickly, and we had a blast. Um, the first time we played, uh, we actually got the rule wrong, where uh, I thought once you went out, then you were out of the game completely and um, for, for that round. And so you no longer contributed to, did somebody pick this, uh, uh, pick this card or not? Uh, when we played three players, and I realized that that wasn't the case... Uh, it, it became a lot, uh, well, A, a lot easier to play, but also a little bit more challenging. Um, again, just playing with three players and you have so few, you know, other players to rely on. It, it was, it was a very different experience, but one that I really, really enjoyed. And normally, uh, I didn't notice it at the time. Um, I don't usually go for, you know, games that require three players, be because what if it's just my wife and I? But regardless, I don't mind. This was a great addition to the collection. Uh, we've actually played it quite a few times since uh, since we picked it up. So overall, I have to absolutely recommend Stella. It is a lot of fun. It does you know bridge that uh, that gap of a game that's very easy and that anybody can play to something that can be a little bit more challenging and make people really think about how they're playing the game. Uh, the way the categories, you know, interact, uh, you know, very, very interesting. I really, really like how they did it. It feels like Dixit, but a new flavor of Dixit and not just more of the same. So, 
Other than that, what about you? Have you played Stella? Have you tried it before? What do you think of Dixit in general? Um, I really should do a review of that one as well. But overall, you know, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this because honestly, this is a great game and you know, absolutely loved it. So if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Again, make sure that you're subscribed. I do try to put out a few videos each week talking about different tabletop content. And I'd love for you to come along and see what I have to share. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time.